So here we go then, it's the third episode of our Sunday lunch and uh, we're glad you could make it along. I'm John McGilvery. And my name's Liam Rudden and uh, just to remind you as always I am monitoring the Facebook page here. So we have uh, James Sargent joining us and if you have any questions that you've always wanted to ask James anything at all just fire it onto the Facebook feed and uh, I'll read that out. We've already got quite a few in today so it's looking like it's going to be quite a good show. John. Yeah, thanks, Liam, and welcome along, James. Good to have you here. Yeah, good to be here. So how's, um, obviously, first things first, how's lockdown for you and, and, and the family? How are you coping? Yeah, not bad. Um, it's good to spend time with uh, with everyone at home. Um, yeah, managing to keep busy, uh, doing a little bit of gardening, a little bit of work around the house, and, uh, yeah, being able to go to work as well, so being pretty busy. Yeah, some of the guys um, have been getting uh, jobs. We spoke to Josh last week, who had got a job as well. We spoke to Rory Schlein, who's away delivering parcels as well. Have you managed to get some work to keep you tidying over? Yeah, one of my sponsors, Air Power. Um, I work with them all uh, through the winter, and uh, I've been able to carry on working. So, so yeah, it's been good. Good. We've got um, some people saying hello already for you, um, Anne Dunlop. Has uh, said hello to everybody. Hello, James. Um, we've also got uh, Mar Mary Alice McClellan from the other side, uh, a Tigers fan who misses you and sends all the best to you and our fa the family. Um, Lynette Linton's joined us. She's saying good afternoon and she sent you two big red love hearts. So, is it something you're missing? Uh, sorry, Leo, is it something you're missing then as being part of the action, uh, James? You were one of the first few. <laughs> to get a skid by, by doing the, the Ben Fund meeting. It must be really frustrating having been out, had a ride, and now we're kind of sitting our feet up. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, everything was ready to go. We managed to get one meeting in, and uh, just before we were coming up to Edinburgh, uh, that's when all this kicked off. So, yeah, we parked everything back up and just playing a waiting game now. Yeah, it must be quite frustrating when you, we've spoken to, to Sam and Josh already about the team that was put together. You know, with Sam, Josh and Richie as a, a, a trio up top, yourself and Willie backing them up, and the two new guys, it did look on paper like we had a right good side there um, to, to have a go at the title this season. Is it frustrating that we've not been able to get on track and, and see how good that team could have been? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, Edinburgh's a team that always uh, there or thereabouts at the end of the season. So, um, yeah, they've got a good management team that know what they're doing. Um, yeah, it looks a good team on paper. Sometimes teams on paper don't always work, but I had a good feeling about this team. So, yeah, we're looking forward to starting. Got a question here for you, um, James, from Lynette Linton, who asks, you know, just how difficult was it for you to put your allegiance to Glasgow aside and to sign for Edinburgh? And, um, how, you know, and how, how do you feel now that you're, you know, you're, you're one of the blue and gold, you're not one of the red and white anymore? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, well, I loved my time at Glasgow, to be fair. Um, got on well with the fans and management, sponsors, everyone. Uh, met a lot of good people there. So, yeah, it were, it were a little bit different um, riding for Edinburgh when I've always rode against them. But um, it's Speedway. I, I just love racing at the end of the day. And, uh, yeah, I were able to carry on my racing when Edinburgh gave me a second chance last season. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. It was good. This is... This this would have been your first pool season with Edinburgh. Did you have any goals set out that you wanted to achieve? Um, Edinburgh's always been a, a track that um, that probably favours me. Um, when when my confidence is up and things are going well, it's a track I enjoy riding. So uh, obviously, I was just planning on being as um, as fit as I can, give myself the best chance, and just enjoy my racing again. And hopefully, the points will come come in that way. Good. Um, now, obviously, we like to get a feel for how the guys all started out in the sport. So, I think it was 2009 for yourself, um, James, it all kind of started. So, where did it start? Now, bear in mind, if we could get an answer in between what we think Willie lost and the time it would take him and the time it took George Pickering last week to answer that question. Somewhere <laughs> in the middle, James, would be good. But, but how did it all start for you? Um, the company my dad used to work for uh, used to sponsor Sheffield Speedway. So, uh, they used to take customers down every Thursday and um, yeah, I, w I went along one Thursday with him and uh, yeah, just got hooked really, I just loved it. 
I used to go and uh, sit on Sean Wilson's back after the meeting and go around on parade with him. And uh, yeah, I used to love it. And one week, I think it were one of the riders said to us, "Oh, you can you can actually have a go at this if you want. If you, you used to have a training track round the back of the main track." So yeah, one week we went down on a Saturday, and ever since then, yeah, I've just carried on riding week after week. Uh, I started on one of the training bikes down there, a little, I think it was 80cc or something. Then I got a little PW80. Um, yeah, and just carried on through that, a little 150. And then back then, we didn't have 250s, it was just straight to 500s. So, uh, yeah, straight to the 500, and that were it. You were, you were the Sheffield Tigers mascot as well. How did that come about? Yeah, just from riding at Sheffield, uh, to be honest, I think. Um, I think, I think I was Sheffield mascot for a couple of seasons. I used to go out and parade with them and do a few starts before meeting and then do a few laps after the meeting. Yeah, I used to love it. And uh, you, signed, you signed for the Bees in, in 2009, is that right? I signed through, sorry. The Bees, Country Bees, in uh, 2009. Yeah, I'm not really sure on years and things, but yeah, I signed yeah. for Covington and uh, I did a few years in National League. Uh, kind of tried to stay out of the well, Premier League back then. So I didn't quite think I was ready. I mean, a few lads who were, I grew up racing, we moved up a little bit earlier. But yeah, I, um, I kind of held back a little bit until I thought I was ready. And I think I did my full first season with Glasgow in 2015. We've got a question here for you about your time at Workington <clears throat> from Christopher Black. Um, James, he says, I remember you having a pretty rough time at Workington a few seasons back. As a young rider, <clears throat> what do you do to push through at those times and how did you keep your confidence up? Well, I didn't really keep my confidence up, to be fair. <coughs> yeah, a pretty rough time, that's a good way of putting it. Um, yeah, it were a rough time when a lot of riders go through good and bad patches and unfortunately I was having a, a bit of a bad patch then. And uh, yeah, a lot of things were happening and the uh, confidence was down. I went scoring points. I went earning money. So it were it were an odd it were an odd time that year. But um, I think it was the same season. Coventry shut down as well when I was meant to race for them. So I was left with no team before going to Workington. Um, yeah, but I think going back to your question, um, towards the end of the season, I just put a lot more time into my training. Just try to get my mind away from speedway. I think I was trying. I was thinking about it too much, and I was putting too much time into speedway, and it was just it weren't working. So I tried a different approach. Tried um, obviously went more into my training and things, and I can well. I finished the season off good. Uh, start scoring points again, and then that gave me confidence for the year, for the season after. And that confidence is really important, isn't it? I mean, do you do you sense that in your head? Can you sense that things are changing again? That the the, the tide is turning. Yeah, definitely. I mean, confidence, it's with any sport, you, you're confident, that's that's most of the battle, um, especially with Speedway. So, uh, yeah, like I said, a lot of riders go through good and bad patches. Um, that's probably a lot down to the confidence. When when things are going good, you've just got to grab it with both hands and make the most of it. Well, before I hand you back to John, uh, Alex Harkis has been on and he says, <laughs> it's good to see you, James. Yeah, good to hear from you. James, um, it wouldn't be an interview with uh, James Sargent if we didn't mention um, a certain aspect of your your riding. I'm sure you, you could wonder what that might be. Um, <coughs> you had an example of it on the uh, the rewind match on Tuesday night. Um, how would we put it? How would you anticipate in the start, maybe James? How would you uh, how would you want it? Unlucky, maybe. Yeah, probably unlucky. <laughs> I mean, it is something that you've uh, you've probably got a, a reputation for, and it's it's not something I want to dwell on the, the negative of it. Certainly, I'm looking at, at things like anticipating a start. You haven't touched the tapes. You've, the tapes have risen. You're away. What's your take on that? Because a lot of people say, "Oh, you should be sitting still at the start." Other riders say, "Well, haven't touched the tapes. That's the rule." What's your take on it? Yeah, I think it was a little bit of a grey area until um, until my deal got made made like a big deal of but um yeah if you don't well as long as you're not rolling and you don't touch the tapes I don't really see see what what the problem is but um yeah everybody wants everyone to start 
at the exact same time. So if someone's a bit slower, it makes you look a little bit quicker. Um, I know I definitely get pulled up for it. So, yeah. Sorry, on you, Liam. Not when you're on, you go, Liam. I just to say, we've had a few questions about that. So shall we just rattle through them and get them yeah. out of the way and then we can move on. Um, David Cunningham um, said, obviously, he's, he's touching on the, the tapes and he says, do you, you have a specific starting technique? Um, and again, we've just touched it really, but do you feel penalised for making very fast but legal starts? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I think I get penalised a lot more than some other riders. But... Um, yeah. It is what it is, really. It's nothing I can say or do changes it, but I just have to wait. Uh, yeah, I just have to deal with it. I have a certain, I have a certain like routine I go through when I get to the tapes. Obviously, deep breaths, check everything, uh, make sure everything's good, feel good in what I'm starting in my ruts. Uh, yeah, so. Well, that leads us on to Christopher Black's question. Uh, he says, "Does that reputation you have?" affect you when you go to the tapes now? Are you always very aware when you're at the tapes? Um, yeah, sometimes. I mean, certain referees try to catch you out, I think, uh, by holding the tapes a little bit longer. Um, but like I said, it is what it is. We've just, we've just got to deal with it and just get on with it. OK, and Derek Wilkinson, who everybody knows is Derek, the bus driver, from a team, one of our team sponsors, uh, Thurdingston Private Hire, he sends all his best wishes to all the Monarchs fans everywhere, especially those on the supporters coach home and away. And he asks if, you know, the amount of times you get pulled back for an unsatisfactory start seems unfair to you. He's old enough, he says, to remember the great Ivan Major, who was very, very good and could do starts, good fast starts. And he says, um, you know, would they have pulled him back for the same thing? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, if you look, if you watch a lot of old videos uh, from back in the day at Speedway, I think they were rolling and bouncing off tapes and things. So I think, yeah, if uh, a lot of them starts now, nah, definitely not, not be allowed. <laughs> well, I think they've done the starts to death, don't you, John? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I'm glad you mentioned Ivan Major there, Liam, because when I was doing a bit of research, um, and it doesn't sound to me like a New Zealand accent you've got there, James. But um, you won the New Zealand Solo Championship in 2015. How did that come about? Yeah, I just went over one winter to do a little bit of racing. Um, managed to do enough meetings to enter the New Zealands. And uh, yeah, just, uh, well, just said, I think they were bunion in it. I'm not sure if there's any other riders you've heard of, uh, maybe. There's a few New Zealand lads who come over and rode uh, past few seasons. But yeah, we're, we're, we're a decent meeting. And where about in, in New Zealand were those meetings held? It was just one meeting in Christchurch, right. or Park. And just on a run in a kind of Grand Prix format, or was it the, the 20 heats and, and the semi and then the final? I'm not too sure, I can't really remember, because there were about 100 heats that day with sidecars <laughs> and the midgets and things. So yeah, it was just it was a long day. <laughs> OK, I've got a great question here from David Brown. Where did you get those cushions? <laughs> I think Joe Exotic might have something to say about those cushions. <laughs> um, Barry Patterson wants to know, do you think the 2021 season will start? And if it does, will social distancing still be involved? I don't know that you yeah, can 2020 answer that. Or 2021. Sorry, 2021, sorry. Do you think the 2021 season will start? And if it does... Will social distancing still being involved? Can any of us answer that? Yeah, I'm still hoping 2020 starts. So I'm hoping 2021 starts. But definitely. Social distancing will be uh, interesting to see how that, that, that pans out. Keeping two, uh, two, what is it, two metres away from everybody in a, in a non-contact sport? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how they'll manage that going into the first corner. Yeah. We'll have to widen, that, we'll have to widen tracks. <laughs> okay, let me see. I've got um, uh, Amy Greenwood. What are your plans uh, for the, if this season kicks off? 
first of all, what are your plans just now, James? What, are, what is it you do at the moment? You're, you're in lockdown, but you're still working as well, yeah? Yeah, I've managed to get a little bit of working. Um, like I say, Air Power, one of my sponsors, they've got a sister company. Uh, it's an engineering company called Procore. Um, yeah, so I've been working, working in that workshop. Um, just keeping busy, really. Keeping fit, as fit as I can. And um, does that let you get, does that let you get out to keep fit as well? Is that all, does that all help with the fitness? Yeah, I can I try and get um try and get out jogging as much as I can. Uh, we go out on walks as a family. Um obviously if weather's weather's nice enough to do so, which it has been. Um yeah, just been uh, I've been doing these own workout videos. I think Joe Wicks and whatever else I can find on YouTube. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's important for everyone to try and stay as fit as they can just now because we're all going a bit uh, stuff crazy and inside. One of the things we've asked uh, the boys previous to you is um, favourite tracks and least favourite tracks. Now, the worrying thing about the the trend seems to be that the least favourite tracks are Berwick and Newcastle and, and tracks that, as Edinburgh, we go to quite a lot. So that's a bit of a worry. But what's your kind of favourite and least favourite tracks up and down the country? Um, I used to love Coventry when it were open. Um, I like Edinburgh, but like I say, when you're confident, you go to any track and you can you can go and score points. You you don't really look at that side of things. Uh, when things aren't going as well, you go to these trickier tracks like Berwick and Newcastle, and you kind of like, well, hope, well, you just hoping for the best really. But but yeah, uh, I can't. Well, I didn't used to like Newcastle. I like it now. Uh, Berwick's a tough one, I'd say. Um, still trying to get mid round that, but but yeah, I'm hoping just uh, start scoring some points ahead and we get that confidence up and carry it away from home. You think that's a big thing then? If you if you're scoring well at home, you turn up at away tracks and you know whereas before you might have turned up when I haven't scored well at home. If, here we go. I don't. I'm not a big fan of this track, but you know, well, I got double figures at Edinburgh on Friday. And here I am. So come on, let's go. Let's attack it. Is it a total different mindset? when you're scoring points at home to take that away from home. Yeah, definitely, because you've already beat these riders once, so you've, yeah. you've already got one over on them. Yeah. Christopher Black makes a good point. Um, you know, why do you think that you suit Armadale when um, considering your background of development as a bigger tracks like Sheffield and Coventry? You know, Armadale's a very different track to that. So what, what, why do you suit that then, do you think? Um, well, before our mascot for Sheffield, I learned on the the training track at Sheffield, which were a small, tight, tight track uh, with tight little corners. And um, I think that's where it comes from, uh, riding riding that week in, week out. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, well, like like I said, Newcastle, when I didn't used to like it, but now I've got, I've got my head around it a little bit better. Um, it's one of my more preferred tracks. OK, we've got a question from you from Lewis Riddle, James. Who's your favourite rider to team ride with? Um, I've had some good races. Well, I've had some good meetings with Bomber. Bomber's looked after me well on and off track. So, uh, yeah, probably Bomber. Cook, Cook is a good lad to have in your team as well. And Scott Somerville asks, what do you find the most enjoyable uh, aspect of the sport and what do you find the most challenging? Well, when things are going well and you're winning races, that's the most enjoyable. It's a good feeling. Uh, the the toughest is probably um, not sure to be honest. Probably when things aren't going as well, and you're trying to you're trying everything to sort things out, engines, uh, setups, everything. That's uh, that can be a bit of a bit of a headache. What have been the riders that have probably helped you the most then, James? Who have been the guys? You mentioned Bomber Harris there. He's obviously got a lot of experience uh, at a GP level. Is there guys that you talk to um, fairly regularly, guys that have helped you um, quite a lot in your career? Yeah, probably Bomber. Cookie helped me quite a lot last season. Um, when I went for a little bit of a tough patch, I lend him my engines and things. Um, Gary Avalok has helped me a lot. Um, obviously, as a team manager and even after Coventry, he's always uh, he's, he's been good to speak to. Um, yeah, so probably probably them, really, that I can think of. You mentioned Coventry again. They're obviously a, a team that's close to your heart, by the sounds of it. 
how sad is it to see the demise of Brandon and, and, and what's happened there? Oh, it's very sad. I mean, um, I think I shared something on Facebook not long back when they just had a fire and just yeah. looking through them pictures, it's, it's not nice to see, really. I mean, there's some good times down there, some good seasons. And, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully the guys who were, trying, who were fighting for it to get it back, uh, yeah, I wish them all the, all the best and hopefully they can, um, they can get it, get it st- uh, done. Okay, I've got a question for you here, James, from Alex Gibson. Uh, he sent us an email and he says, I think James is a good racer. Does he enjoy a close race? And what does he think about during a race? So what do I think about during a race? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I've been back <clears throat> some good close races. Um, I'm not, not really sure what I'm thinking about during a race. I'm just, uh, just super concentrated, really. Um, yeah, I don't really get a chance to think about what, well, for that 60 seconds we're racing, I don't think my mind's just that, that focused. It's just I don't really remember what I was thinking. <laughs> okay, and Scott Godwood putting you on the spot here. <coughs> if you were a team captain, who would your 1-7 to seven be in your team? A bit of an odd one for, for on the spot question. Need a bit of time mm-hmm. to think about that one. Have a think uh, about any riders, uh, any riders that stick out that would be straight into the team. Uh, Cookie, Bomber. Can I have pass riders? Can you watch that? Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ave. Um, it's a bit of a tough one, this. Probably Ty. Um, have you ridden beside Ty? Have you ridden with him previously in teams? No, I think when no. uh, I think we rode against him when he was riding for Wolverhampton that season. Yeah. But apart from that, no. Um, I'm not too sure, to be honest. It's an hard one. I'd need a little bit of time to think. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to you on that one then a wee bit later. Lynette Linton is saying, how are you, how's your little baby and the family getting on? Yeah, I think she's just having a little bit of dinner now. Um, yeah, we're all good, thank you. Um, we're managing and coping. To be honest, well, I'm enjoying my time at home really, because she's uh, she's just at that age now where she's picking more things up and she's starting to learn to crawl and and do loads of little things, and it's just nice to be here and see it. Keeping you busy then? Yeah, definitely. So, kind of moving on to um, to to this season, or what hopefully will be this season. Have you heard anything from? Any of the riders around you, obviously the BSP have been putting things out on uh, on on social media. In terms of any chances of a restart or a start, certainly, of this season. And behind closed doors is something that's been mentioned as well. How would you feel about racing behind closed doors? Um, if we can get any racing in, it would be a bonus. So, however we do it, it would be, it'd be, it'd be good. But, no, nah, I've not really heard anything. I've just seen what what the BSBA has been posting on the, on posting the statements on Facebook and Twitter and things. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I just know as much as you guys, really. Unless you know more. <laughs> Wish. <laughs> what I did see this week was the, a strange thing coming out of Poland. Um, talking about getting riders over to Poland, quarantining for 14 days, and then getting a season starting. Sweden then coming out, or the Swedish Speedway authorities coming out and saying, well, we don't want our riders going anywhere. Uh, you know, Poland are at least trying to get the season started. You know, do you agree with the way they're kind of going about it, or what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, they get, I think, well, they get a lot more sponsorship and TV deal money, so yeah, they're able to do that. I think it's a little bit different for us in uh, in Britain, but yeah, it'd be nice to it uh, to get some meetings, whether they're behind closed doors or not, in in this country. So um, yeah, fingers crossed. And Dave uh, Cunningham asking, uh, do you feel that if we do get some racing this year, do you feel that being at number six, there's a, a chance of earning more as you've got the chance of uh, scoring more points from that position? Um, yeah, I didn't quite know what, what number I wear, but, but yeah, definitely. Uh, whatever number I am, I don't really look at it like that. I just, uh, just want to go out and win some races. Okay, and Stuart Wilson... Will you be discussing race tactics when riding with Willie Lawson at reserve this season? 
could be a potent com uh, combination. Yeah, as long as you finish first and second, whichever way around, it doesn't bother me. And how long do you think that conversation with Willie would last? Five seconds, ten seconds? <laughs> I'm not too sure. I don't think I could understand me. That's usually his part. You okay there, Liam? There you go. That's what the ceiling looks like. <laughs> it had to happen, wasn't we? Yeah, but it does look, in fairness, it does look like, a, 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 for, certainly for the first while until the averages come out, um, it does look like a formidable reserve pairing. Um, I think the way the averages work, it would be yourself and Willie um, at reserve. Now that gives the Monarchs a huge advantage at the start of the season. Um, what should you know? Obviously, reserve gives you technically easier races against again supposedly lesser op opponents. You know, I suppose nobody wants to be at reserve, but do you mind being at reserve, or are you like, no, no, I want to be in that main body of the team? Yes, it's tougher racing, but that's kind of where I want to be. Yeah, I kind of more want to be in main body of the team. I want to move up and up, so. Well, no, it don't, doesn't really bother me that much that I'm starting at reserve. So, um, nothing changes really. Just might get a few more extra rides. But, uh, yeah, nothing changes. Still, uh, everything the same. Let's go for it. We'll give a wee shout out here to Joel Anderson, Josh Pickering and Luke Rurick, who are all watching along here today. And Sam, Sam Masters has joined us as well, Liam. <laughs> Sam just joined us, yeah, there yep. he is. And uh, got another mess another question from Scott Birdwood who wonders who is the hardest rider to ride against? So of your rivals that you've taken on, who's the hardest rider to ride against? Uh, not too sure to be honest. Obviously when you when growing up with a few lads racing <laughs> when we're younger it's always uh, there's a little bit of rivalry there, but no, just uh, there's certain riders you've got well, you watch out for I can't really trust them, but apart from that, just do you get do you get nervous before a race, before a meeting? Eh, uh, no, I don't, not really. No, just, just well, a little bit of nerves, but that's just, uh, I think that's just part of part of it, really. I think if you didn't get nervous, you were nervous excitement, whatever you may call it. So you need you, you need a little bit of nerves, don't you, to talk, to just to focus. Yeah, definitely. Um, I kind of have a little bit of a routine before meeting. Well, race day really about what I, what I do and what I eat and, and things. And uh, yeah, it all just builds up to that first race. And can, can that, you share that routine? Can you share that routine with us, James? Yeah, what would be a typical kind of day if you're riding at Armadale on the Friday night? What would be a typical day from from when you get up to when you head up to Armadale? Uh, try and have a bit, little bit of a lie-in, uh, have a decent breakfast, obviously a good dinner and and uh, just try and stay relaxed really. Obviously there's a lot of travelling and whether I'm driving or not, I'll try and get a little bit of uh, a sleep in before a meeting, um, a little bit a little bit more food before a meeting um, and then yeah, it's just go through the motions before a meeting, all that hanging about and waiting and speaking to people and get changed and then that's it, it's ready to go. On, uh, just when I see Sam uh, joining us here, he'll obviously be the captain of, of the side next season. How important is it um, to have a good captain in your side? You know, they talk about when the, in 2014 and how influential Derek was as a captain in the, in the league winning season. Um, you know, is that something that makes a huge difference or is it something that's like, oh, he's there and that is what it is? Yeah, definitely. It makes a big difference. Um... You've got someone to look up to, especially Sam. He's a, we all know how good he is around Edinburgh. So, yeah, it's to uh, have someone like that to look up to and uh, offer help when needed. Sometimes when some of the lads get his head down, it's nice to have someone there to, to come and cheer us up and things. And, uh, yeah, gear's back up, really. Now, James, I've got a question here from John Binney that I need you to think about. <laughs> and you need to think really carefully before you answer, OK? Do you I, wasn't prefer... gonna, I wasn't going to ask this one, Liam. I'm leaving this one up to you. <laughs> Do you prefer Edinburgh or Glasgow? In what way? <laughs> all he asks. I think he's asking you to pick a favourite. I think they, they should probably yeah, ask you favourites favorite. at this moment. He, he, his body language has went very defensive. I love there, Liam, I've realized that. 
my passions were ever a ride for. So um, yeah, I think that's that's a fair enough. So answer. your passions for Edinburgh then? That's what you're saying. Yeah, I'm riding for Edinburgh this <laughs> year. So yeah, I want Edinburgh to win. I think that was the right answer, eh, John? <laughs> no, I don't give prefer any. There's no club I prefer when I'm riding there. I've, I've said yeah to a deal and, and things. So yeah, that's. Uh, I think we talked about this one day just before a meeting, James, um, when we did the, the pre-show interview. When you first came to Edinburgh, was it was it awkward? Was it difficult? Because everybody was still thinking of you as that Glasgow rider. Um, did you did you find that you were you were welcomed though? Regardless of that, did you did you find you settled in really quickly at Edinburgh? Yeah, I felt I felt welcome. Um, obviously, I know a lot of. A lot of lads from racing with and against them in the past. So, yeah, yeah, I felt welcome. I didn't feel awkward at all or, or out of place. So, yeah, it were, it were nice. Has there been any times in your career that you went to a team and, and you thought, I just, yeah, I don't fit in here or I, I maybe don't belong here or anything like that? Has there been a time of maybe working to, but that you've thought, you know, this really isn't Kenny for me? Yeah, well, yeah, you could say Workington, but. I went through a bit of a rough patch anyway, and I don't think everything that was going on around me and things helped. Um, but yeah, the lads in the team, I still got on with them well, and they still tried to help me and things. So yeah, you could probably say working to a little bit. Well, we've got a big guest appearance there. <laughs> in okay, the background. Yeah. Someone kicking <laughs> off in the background. <laughs> yeah, she's morning. She must want more dinner. <laughs> Christopher Black would like to know, James, has there been opportunities to ride for Edinburgh before? I know the fans have always talked about you signing uh, and that you had a few guest bookings prior to signing for Glasgow, but were there talks in the, in the past about you coming to Edinburgh? Not too sure, to be honest. Um, my memory is shocking. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. I, when I was younger, I think I did a few guest bookings for Edinburgh. And, yeah, I got treated well back then. Everyone, I think Derek Sneddon was the captain back then. Uh, yeah, everyone helped me. He helped me quite, quite a lot. Um, yeah, I felt welcome back then. Um, I'm not too sure if there's been chances before when I've been asked to come off the top of my head. No, so you certainly with that, go on, John. No, so, so it's just say with that, obviously people... Well, in, foot, in football, they know it goes through their agent. The agent makes contact with the club on behalf of the player, blah, 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 blah. How does that work in Speedway then? If, if Edinburgh are looking to say, right, we want James Sargent in our team, is it just a case of John or Alec, like one of the promotion contacts you and it's a direct conversation between the two teams then, or between the team and the rider then, sorry? Yeah, I think you have to ask permission of whoever they're owned by, really, whoever they've got a contract mm -hmm. signed. Um, I think if you, as long as you ask them, and pretty much they'll say yeah, and, and then as, unless they want to use you themselves. And then they contact you and you, you work a deal out and yeah, that's it. So who who is it you who owns your deal your contract just now then? Yeah, uh, Glasgow. Glasgow. So in this case Edinburgh would then contact Glasgow, say, Look, you're not using James Sargent anymore. We want to speak to him, we want to use him, and then ask for permission and then strike a deal up with you, between yourself and Edinburgh, yeah? Yeah. It's just it's interesting to know how these things kind of work out. Yeah, that's pretty much it really. James, I've noticed that a lot of riders these days have got tattoos, and you're you're one of them there. And um, what's the significance of your tattoos? Tell us about them. Well, I've actually got I've actually got me tattooed on me racing. Ah, oh. is that you? Is it? Yeah. Can you get that up to the camera for everybody to see. <laughs> there you go. Brilliant. And then this is just Greek mythology, so. Greek mythology. Yeah, just Greek gods and temples and things. And is it, Are we going to get a couple of tattoos, with Liam, with me and you with microphones? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do that. Saving that black. Have you anything, anything more, Liam, anything for the, the fans? I've got one here from Gary Dixon. No, um, targets for, you do for that. this season. Yeah, just up in the average. Is it a couple of points? So what, what was the target for this season? Just go out and enjoy it. Just get that confidence back. Um, I was confident having Edinburgh as an home track. I feel that last season, it was just kind of steady, really. I think I could be more points than what I were, um, definitely. Um, so, yeah, just get back to enjoying it, really, and 
just enjoying my racing. James, one question. Uh, just remind people that you can still send questions and don't leave it to the last couple of minutes because then you won't get them read out. Um, but James, how important uh, are your sponsors? It's always good to give them a shout out and something like this. How important you know, are sponsors to a rider these days? Very important. Yeah, definitely. I mean, without sponsors, we, we won't be racing. I mean, um, like you say, you could give them... Like, Grant, uh, Grant Anderson Tankers from Glasgow, he's helped me a lot over the last few seasons, even when I've not been at Glasgow. So, yeah, just a big thank you to him. Um, like I say, Air Power was, uh, was helped me out working during the winter. Uh, City Gearboxes from Coventry, they've stuck with me. Um, I should have really got a list list wrote down I've got anyone but but yeah there's a lot of VHS ten tools have helped me out there's a yeah I'm, I'm going to end up missing some out here honestly I've missed uh, probably going to have your race sitting in Gavin Hydeal Hy <clears throat> from Australia says hello from Australia James who's your favourite Aussie riders I've got to say Sam and uh, Josh, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mary Alice McClellan is back on. Aussie Riders. Saying good luck for the season um, and she'll catch up with you if you come to Glasgow with Edinburgh. Thank you. Just uh, before, before we kind of wrap up, uh, James, what's been your fondest memories in, in Speedway and what have been some career highlights for you? Um, playoff finals, uh, things like that. Um, obviously, I think we had a good couple of meetings with Glasgow a few years back when we made playoff finals, Coventry. Uh, I think we just missed out at Pool. Um, yeah, yeah, just things like what's, that. Really. What's the, the, the playoff finals as, as a rider? You go into them, um, I think back to 2015 and the, the battles with, with Edinburgh and Glasgow. The Friday, Saturday night. I remember going through on the Friday night, and there was a big crowd, a lot of anticipation, a lot of nervousness at the start. Um, what um, what's it like going into to these meetings with, with, with you know basically the league title on the line? Yes, yeah, so you're up for it. You're a little bit of nerves, but yeah, it's uh, you're ready to throw everything on the line and uh, just go for it, really. But yeah, it's a it's a good feeling. What's the difference like in the pits? What's the tension like? You know, is, could, do you see a difference in the riders? Uh, yeah, there's more tension. Um, I think everyone's a little bit more nervous. Everyone wants to do well. Everyone wants to make sure that then they don't let anyone down. Um, yeah, you can definitely tell a, di a difference. Okay, Christopher Black asks, having been around Sheffield since you were a kid, how do, how do you feel about them stepping up and the signing of Pedersen? <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good thing. It's I look forward to to going to watch him if we can get a season in. Um, yeah, it'll be good. It'll be interesting seeing around Sheffield. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah, it's a very good thing. And Gordon McDonald asks, how's Enzo doing? Oh, I've got Enzo off that list. I've got to, got to say thanks to Enzo. <laughs> um, yeah, Enzo's doing good. He's uh, he's uh, still doing his kitchen. Tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, I think, I think that's everything from us, Liam. Have you got anything more that you, you want to There's add? Nothing else coming, John. I think that's just about us for the day. Yeah, probably. Well, listen, James, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for taking the time out um, to speak with us. It's been a pleasure. No worries. I'll hopefully see you all soon. Fingers Here's crossed. Jay. Absolutely. We'll be back on Tuesday night. I think it's actually Sheffield Tigers as the match on Tuesday night on EMTV Rewind. And uh, we'll be back next Sunday as well with hopefully another member of the current Monarchs 1-7. to seven. So that's it from us. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you again next Sunday. Thanks, James. No worries. Thank you.